Why does Ezekiel 18 kill Calvinism? Because of at least four things. Ezekiel 18 speaks directly against one, original sin, two, total depravity, three, preservation of the saints, four, a fixed elect group, which means God desires all others to be reprobate. Each of these are integral parts of Calvinism. Only one of these needs refuting, to kill Calvinism. Ezekiel 18 refutes all four. Now, Ezekiel is an Old Testament. Is this reliable for doctrine? Paul says, all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. Is Ezekiel 18 suitable for doctrine? Yes, it is scripture. Ezekiel 18 refutes original sin. The idea that we inherit the guilt of our first parents' sin. Against original sin. Why should the son not bear the guilt of the father? Because the son has done what is lawful and right, and has kept all my statutes, and done them, he shall surely live. Why does God say this? Against original sin, the soul who sins shall die. The son shall not bear the guilt of the father, nor the father bear the guilt of the son. The righteousness of the righteous shall be upon himself, and the wickedness of the wicked shall be upon himself. Particular sin against God is echoed by whoever has sinned against me, I'll blot him out of my book. All are sinners, for all have sinned, but only known conscious and deliberate sin is accounted. Ezekiel 18 refutes total depravity. The idea that man is totally unable to turn to God or do good without a new input from God following his physical birth. The idea is that free will is not free. It is disabled from acting against sin. Against total depravity. But if a wicked man turns from all his sins which he has committed, keeps all my statutes, and does what is lawful and right, he shall surely live, he shall not die. Why? Because he considers and turns away from all the transgressions which he committed. He shall surely live, he shall not die. How can a wicked man do that? Because God says he can. He is not totally disabled. As we read in verse 28, God says of the wicked who turns, he considers and turns away. Is there any hint or assumption of a new enabling by God before the repentance? No. Is there an assumption that the man himself is able to consider his ways and change? Yes. This is echoed by the spirit in man is not totally dead. Literal Hebrew. In the day that you eat of it, dying you shall die. And God gives a spirit to all. The spirit needs forming onwards to rebirth for full life. Ezekiel 18 refutes preservation of the saints. The idea of once saved, always saved. 
it is impossible once righteous before God and following Jesus to turn back and be lost against preservation of the saints but when a righteous man turns away from his righteousness and commits iniquity and does according to all the abominations that the wicked man does shall he live all the righteousness which he has done shall not be remembered because of the unfaithfulness of which he is guilty and the sin which he has committed because of them he shall die this is echoed in the New Testament by Paul's words to Christians therefore consider the goodness and severity of God on those who fell severity but toward you goodness if you continue in goodness otherwise you also will be cut off Ezekiel 18 the scripture is clear man is able to consider and turn from sin man is able to turn away from righteousness Ezekiel 18 is also clear. The judgment to live or die is not based on a mistake, a sudden falling into sin, or a momentary act of good fruit. The passages show that a complete turnaround with much fruit of that showing is in view. A complete change of heart. Ezekiel 18 refutes God desires any to be reprobate. The idea that God elects a fixed number to be saved. Only these are enabled to turn from sin. All others are left as reprobate. The wicked die in their sins because God wills it against God willing any to be lost to be reprobate for I have no pleasure in the death of one who dies says the Lord God therefore turn and live echoed in the New Testament by God desires all men to be saved God is not willing that any should perish as read in its simplest straight sense. Ezekiel 18 refutes original sin. The son shall not bear the guilt of the father. Total depravity. A wicked man considers and turns away. Preservation of the saints. A righteous man turns away. A fixed elect group. All others are desired as reprobate. I have no pleasure in the death of one who dies, says the Lord God. Therefore turn and live. Ezekiel 18 refutes Calvinism. Calvinism is dead in the scripture.